Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the instructions in the video description. Yeah, no problem, man, Bart. I got a 2-5 hand from the Riverwind in Norman. Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma, yep. All right, cool. Um, Hero with 800 effective, uh, the villain in the straddle covers. And villain, I've only been here uh, at the table for about 12 hands or so. Okay. And I had already blocked <clears throat> quads on yeah. one of them. Yeah. And I had river full house. And the villain in this hand was in just about every hand. So in, I had 12 hands. Full, I don't think I've seen him pull three flop before. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, straddle is on the sand, the villain straddle. Um, I did not see the straddle, so... So villain's UTG straddle? Up. UTG straddle? Like a regular UTG straddle? UTG straddle. Right, yeah, regular 10. straddle. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see it, so I bumped it to 20. If I'd what, seen it, I probably would have done 40. So what position are you in? But I'm in the hijack. So it gets folded to you, you raise in the hijack to 20 with what? With uh, king of spades, queen of hearts. Okay. And the small blind calls, he called a lot pre flop. He's not really a factor in this hand. Okay. And the straddle calls. Okay. So we go to the flop. It is king of hearts, nine of hearts, seven of spades. So king of hearts, nine of hearts, seven of spades. You have king of spades, queen of hearts. You sort of made a live misclick pre because you didn't know the straddle. So it's three ways, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, gets checked to me and i lead for 40 or i bet 40 yep into 60 mm -hmm. um both both villains called this one uh the straddle called this one like the uh the small blind thought about it for a bit and the straddle kind of just quickly called just snap called okay so the pot's like maybe 240 ish something like that now right uh the pot is 185 41 20 oh yeah. uh because uh, the big blind. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. 185. Okay, 185. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the turn is the seven of clubs. And here's where my first question comes in. Yep. So it gets checked to me. Mm -hmm. I lead for 75, which is a little less than half pot. Small blind folds. And now the straddle raises to 275. So... You so the turn is a seven of clubs, is that right? Is that what you yeah. said? All right, so it's king of hearts, yeah. nine, nine of hearts, seven of spades, and the turn's a seven of clubs. So the seven, so somebody could have seven acts of hearts here, basically, right? Yeah, it's very, it's it's very possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't have a problem with your bet at all. I think that that's a pretty good card for you. Small blind shouldn't really be calling next act with a seven, in theory. That's supposed to make the straddle call even tighter, and he shouldn't have a seven either. Although, if you said he's playing wild, it's obviously possible. And of course, seven X of hearts is definitely possible. But it sounds to me like, from your description, you think that this guy could have a seven too, over calling the bet on yeah. the flop. Yeah, I had actually seen him in a hand call a multi-way pot. He was uh, closing the action. Uh, with an eight on a king eight four board rainbow. Right, right. And he yeah. ended up taking down the pot with a pair of eights. I so, mean, this one's. I, I mean, here's the thing that you go back and forth with this, and this one's sort of interesting. Like because pe some people will play different styles, right? Some people will play really loose and what, and they'll play really loose and they'll show up with hands they're not supposed to. But those same people might not necessarily play maniacal. You know what I'm saying? Like I know guys that I play with on live of the bike where. They'll have a seven here, but if they raise, it's just an easy fold. They're playing all kinds of trash, and they're going to piece off with five seven on the flop. But 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 I'm not concerned about them check raising me with like a bluff here representing the seven. So it sounds yeah, to me I, like you I don't would... have that much information on the guy. I would if you didn't see the guy play maniacal and he's playing far too many hands, then I think he has a lot of sevens here. You know, you could make a case that you could call. You're betting 75 into 185, and he makes it 275. So it looks like the pot is like maybe 525, 200 for you to call. If you were to call, the pot would be like 725. You only have like 500 left. 
you could sort of play a game of chicken with him, call and see what he does, but if you call and the river's like an offsuit deuce and he moves all in, you don't really have that much more information except for the fact that he's bet again. So that's sort of how I would approach this. Like if I saw a guy V pipping 60 or 70% of hands, but he wasn't necessarily doing anything maniacal, then then I would probably overfold in that spot. And that's not intuitive to people because he's going to show up with more hands. If he's a maniac, then yeah, you just continue on. But I don't know how much info that you have like on, on that yeah, part of it, I, you know? I, yeah, I was thinking he's a little bit of a maniac So at this time. So I, I called because I just thought like, hey, you know, there's still a chance he has heart or he has a straight draw. And there's a lot of cards where it could go check, check. Right? The, so that's kind of how I approach it, like, like you were talking about, where I can get like a, a free card. Well, I mean, here's, well, I mean, even the guys that I see, what's your name? Josh. I got to tell you, Josh, I mean, I've, I've watched him play a lot of poker for many, many years. You sound like an old fart. But uh, even the guys that are maniacs don't, it's very rare that I see somebody go for a delayed check raise bluff on the turn. I'll see guys bluff the flop, but to like piece off here with Queen Jack or Jack 10 or have hearts and now wait until the turn to raise, if this guy's playing really loose, it's way more likely that he has a seven. That's that's my feeling, but okay, you call. All right, what's the river? Yeah. Yep. Uh, the river is the nine of clubs. Okay, so it double pairs the board. Yeah, now I'm just in bluff catcher mode, and Bill and tanks for, like, pretty close to a minute, mm -hmm. and then he bets 400. By the way, one other thing, too. You have the queen of hearts in your hand, which is a very bad thing, right? Like, yeah. if you didn't have the queen of hearts, it would be much, much better because some of the combo draws that you think that he might be raising with, he could have it, but he can't have it. So you say that he bets 400. Is that right? Yeah, four hundred, and that makes the pot like eleven thirty-five. But here's the thing, so I though. I mean, it would make sense to me that he would tank here because he's got the bottom part of a full house. I mean, I know people don't really hand read all that well at this level. I mean, a seven is clearly a bet here at the end from him. Like, there's no reason why he should ever slow down when the nine comes because how you're not going to have a nine. The question is, does he know that? But that would tend to make some sense that he was tanking and trying to think about what he was going to do because he wasn't, he thought if he had like a hand, like seven, six, he thought he had the nuts. And now there's an outside chance looking at the board that he might be losing now. Right. So now he's thinking about it because yeah. it's King nine, seven, yeah. seven, nine. I mean, yeah, I, I, I just, I, the, the, the thing, the only thing that the nine changes is if a guy like only bets the nuts on the river and he's still betting, then you might have a bluff catcher because the hand wouldn't make any sense because the nuts changed on the river and you just see him always get scared and he's continuing to bet. Like if you somehow think that he wouldn't bet a seven here, yet he's still betting and it didn't make sense to you. But I don't know if that's the case here. So I told you I probably would have folded on the turn on the river here. I, I mean, on the, on the flip side, like this might give the guy some more of a bluffing frequency because he thinks that you might be scared of a full house. I don't know. What ended up happening? Uh, I ended up tanking for a bit. I even said, you know, I did a little table talk. I was like, well, I haven't had the queen of hearts. It takes away some bluff. But, you know, he, he kind of, I was like, man, I don't know if you could bluff here. And he kind of shrugged a little bit. And I just decided to, to call because I thought, you know, I only need to be good about one in four times here, a little more of that. And uh, when I called, he just said, good hand, your king's good, and he must. Okay. So, yeah, he turned out to be like, you know, I was giving you a description at the time when I was there. He turned out to be a maniac. Like so, he, so, he was so, so what was your – why did you call the hand in? I mean, just what – do you think that you might – that that you – in retrospect, you shouldn't have called even though you were correct? Yeah. That's kind of that was my big that was my big question because I asked a bunch of people you know we have some uh, other uh, mm -hmm. still some subs that play at the Riverwind and yeah. some other pros that I know and some of them they said you know it was pretty split on whether they'd call or fold a lot of people said they'd fold the turn 
Right. So that's what I was kind of questioning. I was like, you know, I made the call here. I was good. But, you know, am I going to be good one in ten times here or one in four? Well, if you don't know the guy's a maniac, I would definitely tend to overfold this spot. So if you didn't have that info, then I would probably fold. I mean, yeah, you're going to be right some of the time for sure. I just think, again, I don't see a whole lot of guys delayed check race, semi bluff on the turn. I mean, that's just my my experience, and, I, and I've watched a lot of poker. But thanks for the call. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.